38. The Documentary on Gerald Ford Gerald Ford was born Leslie King Jr. in 1913 in Omaha, Nebraska, before taking the name of his stepfather in 1916. He would attend the University of Michigan and was a star player on the football team and attended Yale Law School in 1935. During World War II, Ford was a lieutenant commander in the Navy, serving on the USS Monterey. As for politics, Ford was a representative for Michigan for 25 years and became the House Minority Leader in 1964. Before becoming president, he was appointed to the vice president position after Nixon's vice president, Spiro Agnew, had resigned amid the Watergate scandal. Gerald Ford's domestic career was plagued by inflation, unemployment, the energy crisis, and battles with the Democratic Congress. The main problems that Ford faced were inflation and unemployment, which had caused the economy to slump into a recession, which Ford himself described as the economic production falling and unemployment rising. His solution to the recession, and thus the inflation and unemployment, was simple. Cut taxes and reduce government spending. Unfortunately, he was challenged all the way by the Democratic-dominated Congress. The two sides did not see eye to eye in how to run the country. They did make some progress, such as the Revenue Act of 1975. The Revenue Act of 1975 was compromise and a small victory for Ford concerning the balance between tax cuts and government spending. The Act agreed to a $9 billion tax cut and a decrease in government spending. Another one of Ford's plans for solving the inflation problem was his Project WIN, or Whip Inflation Now. This called for a tax hike and a reduction in government spending. This failed miserably as it gained very little public support. The energy crisis was another battle Ford had with Congress. The energy crisis was when OPEC put an embargo in the U.S. after Nixon supported Israel. As a result, the oil prices rose. Ford's plan for the crisis was to put a tariff on imported oil, to end the price controls on domestic oil, and to put a tax on domestic oil. He believed that this would stimulate domestic oil production and lower its prices. However, the Democrats believed that this would raise the price in the long run. The Omnibus Energy Bill was a compromise Ford made with Congress in 1975, which called for a 12% reduction in domestic oil prices in return for the authority to end price controls on oil after 40 months. By the end of Ford's term, the economy was a bit better, but still sluggish. Inflation was going down, but employment still remained a problem. As for Ford's foreign affairs, after Nixon resigned, he had inherited his foreign policies, as well as his advisor, Henry Kissinger. In the beginning of his short term as president, he came across the end of the Vietnam War. In 1973, a treaty established a ceasefire between North and South Vietnam. Due to deterioration of the South Vietnam's government, Ford asked Congress for assistance in 1974, and Vietnam was given $700 million in humanitarian assistance. However, only a few months later, North Vietnam continued attacks on their southern enemy and would eventually overrun Saigon in April of 1975. Immediately, Ford called for the evacuation of all American personnel as people watched the United States and their assistance and influence in Vietnam. The president's issues in Southeast Asia continued as the communists in Cambodia captured the Mayaguez, an American ship, along with its crew of 38. In response, Ford launched a commando raid in an attempt to rescue the captured crew. However, 40 Americans would die in the operation, but the crew members were all released and the ship was returned. Ford described the operation as a success, and as a result, his approval rating went up 11 points, although critics of him claim that the loss of life in the operation was not worth the risk. Lastly, the most notable item within Ford's foreign policy was the continuation of Didant. Prior to Ford, Nixon wished to lessen the tensions with the Soviet Union during the Cold War, which is where this term popped up. To continue that policy, Ford met with Leonid Brezhnev and other European leaders in Helsinki to sign the Helsinki Accords. The Accords recognized the boundaries of European nations, which were established after World War II, and they also supported human rights. The Helsinki Accords would be responsible for the creation of the Human Rights Watch, 
Ford's presidency was marked with the infamously pardoning Nixon of the accusations of the Watergate scandal. While not making a large impact on the United States, Ford continued the ways of the Nixon administration in both domestic and foreign affairs. However, as he left office, the American public agreed that his nickname of Mr. Nice Guy was well-deserved and he was able to restore order into politics and honor into the White House. President Ford continued to actively participate in the political process and to speak out on important political issues. He would later die on December 26, 2006 in California. He was 93.